Hello and welcome to the last video on changes in the 20th century. In this video we're going to look at punishment and how punishment changed. So we'll start with a quick recap of the industrial period. So we know the industrial period is from 1700 to 1900. Now during this period we had the end of the bloody code in about 1820, so far less crimes carried the death penalty. We get the end of transportation. So we said that Australia starts becoming quite a nice place and actually somewhere where people want to go. So it's not really a punishment anymore. They set up Penterville Prison in 1842, which was the prototype. Remember, it was had those different wings and people were in solitary confinement. So they're in those solitary confinement for potentially 23 hours a day. From the 1860s, prisons became even harder. So we call this period the silent system. So we, we said in the last video, it was about hard board, hard labour, hard fare. They wanted to make it as hard as possible to try and deter people from committing crimes. However, in the 20th century, what we start getting is we start getting change. So in 1902, hard labour is ended. So previously, remember, hard board, hard labour, that's gone. In 1922, there's the end of solitary confinement. That's seen as very harsh. Uh, 1933, we start getting different type of prisons, so open prisons, where these places, which aren't as for people who haven't committed such severe crimes, and actually the, the point of them is they're trying to prepare people for rehabilitation. They want them to be rehabilitated, to change and to come back into the wider community. From 1967, we also get parole. So the idea that behaviour good behaviour leads to a lesser sentence and that's still used today. So if people are good in prison, they can get out earlier. And that's a good way of motivating people in prisons to behave. In the 20th century, we also get these ideas of alternatives to prison. So they're looking at different ways to punish but not necessarily in prison. So in 1907, you get probation officers. So people are released, but they are under probation. So they're being checked on so that they don't do anything wrong. In 1967, you get suspended sentences. So if they do something wrong again, then obviously they have to do the, the punishment for the second crime and the first crime. In 1972, you look at things like community service. So a good example is going and cleaning the streets. So that's a punishment, but not quite as severe as prison. In the 1990s and 2000s, we get electronic tagging. So people are, are only allowed to stay in certain areas. And obviously that will uh, notify the electronic tag if they leave that area. So they're kind of under house arrest. And we also get drug and alcohol treatment. So they're starting to look at the root causes of the crimes rather than just the punishment of the crime. And the reason for these changes is that prisons are very expensive. They cost the taxpayer a lot of money. So if you put people in prison for a very long period of time for a lot of crimes, then it's going to cost you a, a, a lot of money as a government. In the 20th century, they also start looking at how to treat young offenders differently. So in the 19th century, young offenders were kept in normal prisons, just like adults. But in 1902, you get the creation of what were called Borstals, and that's named after a town. So it's effectively what we call a youth detention centre. So it's just for young people. This is kind of reinforced in 1948 with the Criminal Justice Act, where they create detention centres and attendance centres. And in 1963, 1969, you get the Children and Young Persons Act. And the focus really there is on caring and pro so they started to realise that actually a lot of the crimes that are committed by young people are, are really often due to their home and family circumstances. So the idea is that actually you need to take a more caring approach to try and rehabilitate these young people rather than just uh, this straight down go to prison. And in 1982, youth custody centres replaced these borstals and that's something that we'd use today. So you'd go to a youth custody centre. And lastly, we'll look at the death penalty. We know in the early modern period with the introduction of the bloody code, there were loads and loads of 200 crimes that carried the death penalty. That was reduced in the industrial period, but it was still there. In 1908, though, we start seeing some change. So under 16s, the death penalty is abolished. In 1933, for under 18s, it's also abolished. And that 
continuation of being abolished kind of carries out throughout the 20th century. So it mainly is sparked by a number of reasons. One, changing attitudes in society. And the second one is these miscarriages of justice. So in a number of high profile cases, it turned out that the person either didn't do it or there was extenuating circumstances. So Timothy Evans was a prime example. Now he was accused of killing his wife and their child. And it turned out actually it was their, the downstairs neighbor that had killed both of those, but Timothy Evans was killed for that crime. So he had been killed and three years later, they realized he doesn't, hasn't done it. And the problem with the death penalty is obviously you can't do anything about that. Ruth Ellis is also a very high, high profile case. She committed murder but actually in today's society, she had been beaten quite severely by, by the um, boyfriend that she'd killed. And in today's society, we might reduce that to manslaughter, but it carried the death penalty and she was executed as a consequence. So in 1965, we get the Murder Act. So the amendment ended the use of the death penalty for pretty much every single crime, with the exception of treason for example. So in 1998, it wasn't actually until 1998 that we finally end treason. Now treason, remember, is killing the monarch, so that still carried the death penalty until 1998. And one of the big drivers of this change is they want reform and rehabilitation. And they are the main drivers rather than just punishment. So 